Hello, it's John again from Western Maine Defensive Tactics here, and for this installment of Bowie Knife TV, we're going to talk about narrow tanks. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we're going to start out with the bad, or the worst. This is what was commonly referred to, or might still be referred to in many circles, as a rat tail tank. And if you hear that the narrow tang has a bad reputation, it is likely due to this kind of tang here. If we look at the, the bad points about this tang, what's wrong with it, it's the blade is fairly wide, but narrows down abruptly to a very narrow tang. It's not even 50% of that blade's width. The tang transition area here, where it goes from a blade to a tang, is non-existent. There is no transition. There should be as big a radius as can be right in there to absorb stress and distribute the tr stress throughout that area. Instead, it builds up on these nearly 90 degree cuts right here. Also, the tang is narrow and it's, uh, I assume, is heat treated the same as the blade, if at all. This is a Pakistani made Arkansas toothpick blade that I've been using as a trainer for many years. I don't use it for a lot of rugged stuff and I bet if I threw some gloves on to, to wash the sharp edges, I could probably break this tang with my hands or at least severely kink it right here and crack it. Um, this is, again, the worst tang that you could have on a rugged use knife. You have some knives that will put up with it. Mores have knives sim uh, have tangs similar to this, but this isn't a really hard use knife. You know you'd break this if you started leaning on it and prying and things like that. But when you get a big knife, you should be rest assured that it's at least going to do a little shopping, chopping without uh, breaking in half on you. Now, continuing on, we're going to go to what I call the close but no cigar tang. And that's this one. A lot of production knives are made exactly this way, and it's not a bad way to make a narrow tang knife. This is a lot ruggeder than the rat tail tang. This is a decent width tang. It's, it's oh, probably 50% or, or a little bit more blade width, but it also has a fairly abrupt tang transition. If they brought that out in a little bit more of a radius, a little bit more steel in that, in that area, this would be a lot more rugged. Another thing that hurts this knife is uh, the fact that it's through hardened. It's the same heat treatment. Maybe not the butt end of the tang, but through here, through the tang transition, it's nearly as hard as the blade. That can help. Get, that exacerbates this problem of having that angle here. Now, had this been a better tang transition, I really don't think that uh, that um, that heat treatment would really bother it that much. It's not ideal, but for a production knife, it's pretty good. These knives will take some guff. They'll take some use. They'll take some abuse. The problem is, someday, if you're really using it, this will happen to you. This is the handle of a cold steel trial master that I used for, for many years. It was my go-to knife for everything, and it broke off right at this area, doing a fairly light job. Ping, the blade just dropped right off, and I was extremely shocked at the time. But I'm not saying the trial master is a bad knife. If you can look behind you, I have two. I've owned several, and I really like that knife for a, you know, a go-to production Bowie knife. It's a really good one, and uh, there are several out there. But don't think that the knife is indestructible. No knife is indestructible. The knives I make aren't indestructible. Give me a pipe and a vise and I can break any of them. I've done it several times. But just be aware, with this type of tang, this is the issue you're going to come up with. So let's talk about how to make a tang. How to make a, a good narrow tang. Okay, here's a Bowie knife blade. You have a fairly wide ricasso and your, your tang transition this area it's fairly well done. You've got a nice wide ricasso or the width of the blade, whatever it's going to be, and you've got a very wide tang. It's, you know, you're, you've got 90% of that blade's width right there, or 80% of that blade's width. Just a minimum step down to transition from the ricasso to the blade, to the tang. Sorry. Um, I, when I mount the guard on this knife, I'm going to take very little material off this. I'm going to leave that as wide as possible and then slowly taper it. I might relieve some of the tang down in here, you know, take a little bit a little bit of metal off to fit the handle, things like that, but I'm not going to mess with the tang transition. Also, this knife is differentially heat treated. The, the edge is knife hard, there's a springy center section, and this is also the springiness runs down into here too. If you heat treat them correctly, uh, a knife like this can last for generations, and uh, as long as you don't put any stressorizers here, heat treat the tang correctly, correctly and don't um, don't really um, drastically reduce the thickness, I think you're going to be okay. Narrow tangs are extremely rugged and they'll last a long time. They were used on swords for generations. Uh, this is a narrow tang knife. It's an ugly knife, but I used this knife very hard for many years. 
Um, and the tang on this is nearly the width of the blade. That's why this is kind of a, a broad oval that fits my hand really well, is because this tang is about that wide underneath that handle material. And I have it peened at the end. And this is a knife that I've done uh, fairly crazy stuff with. It's not, not really my cup of tea anymore, but I carried it for several years and used it in the woods and beat it through trees and the whole bit. It, a narrow tang knife makes a really rugged knife. Also, it makes a knife that is a sealed unit. I call, I call it a totally encapsulated tang, which means you take this knife in the water, you clean off the blade, you clean off the handle. I mean, I wouldn't take this knife in water because it's wood, but still, it happens. You take care of your wood, and you cannot worry about your tang because you've sealed. I've sealed this with, the, with acro glass. Uh, you don't have to worry quite as much about elements getting into your tang. You still have to take care of your knife. You always have to take care of your knife take care of your knife but with uh, with a full tang you'd have water ingress all over it all over it with a narrow tang you get a little bit more of a, of a sealed unit as I've said uh, I think the balance on um, a narrow tang knife has potential to be better depending on how it's made I also think that um, you have a, uh, the chance to have less weight overall weight for a given blade length or something like that for a type of construction in a given knife I can make a knife oh say three or four ounces lighter overall, just as strong, just as rugged as I can full tang with a narrow tang knife, and still have a little bit more leeway with what I do with the handle. But uh, that's about it on narrow tangs. I'm, uh, I like narrow tangs. I like full tangs. Uh, but on the blue knives I make, they generally are all narrow tangs, just because I think that's a, a superior way to make a blade when you do it right. Just like anything else, you can do it wrong. But I hope this helps you out when you go to pick out a knife. Uh, just because... Just because it's narrow tang doesn't mean it's bad. Just because it's a full tang doesn't mean it's good. You could have anything from this to this under that handle. And you need to know, depending on the mission you have for that blade. But until next time, I'm going to sign off and uh, have a good one. I hope this video helped you out.